how we can identify trends or seasons of the brain. Yeah, so uh, before we get into trends, I just want to say that in order to derive any kind of trends, uh, you cannot rely on snapshot data because... Yeah, no, definitely. That of uh, Rishi's point on the different time frames is like 100% spot on. Is it just the organic traffic that we're seeing or it combines the ad side of the as well? Yeah, and they haven't been super clear about it. I've been trying to yeah. get more information about this. Uh, at one point, they said it was combined. Hello guys, welcome to the Rich Sellers Podcast. Today I joined in by Ritu and Elizabeth with us and we are going to talk about how to use search query performance dashboard to make your PPC decisions. Hi guys, how are you doing? Doing great, how, how about yourself? Yeah, thank you, I'm doing great. So before we begin, uh, let's start with a quick introduction. Uh, Ritu, would you uh, want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I'm Ritu Java. I am the CEO of uh, PPC Ninja. We are a services and software company for am Amazon advertising. Uh, I'm personally based in uh, Vancouver, Canada. That's great. That's great. Elizabeth, a small introduction about yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Elizabeth Green. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of an Amazon advertising agency uh, called Jungler. Yeah, based out of, I'm in Central Florida, uh, team is all over, we're a remote team. That's great, that's great. So uh, today's topic, obviously we are going to go deep dive into uh, what is search query performance, how and what other things inside it, and how we can make our decisions, how we can improve our listings, how to improve our CTR conversion rate, all are this that we are going to talk today. So Elizabeth, let's start with you, a small, uh, like what exactly is search query performance for those who doesn't exactly know it? Yeah, uh, so search query performance is a uh, first party tool, meaning uh, it's Amazon release data. Uh, and when it first released, I think everyone freaked out, freaked out about it in a good way and rightfully so. Um, so before there was, and there still is a lot of other good keyword research tools. Uh, the release of this tool does not discount any other tools or using any other like keyword research software out there. However, what this tool does is it not only marries um, keywords that could be associated with your account, it also gives you performance data. And my personal favorite and one that I'm sure we're going to get into today is it also gives you data on your competition. Um, so I've been like really, really excited about a lot of the new releases Amazon's making in terms of data, because one of the questions a lot of sellers have asked previously is how am I doing versus my competition? You know, you can try and beat your own numbers. You can make sure that you're scaling you over here. But then the question is, okay, great. I know these are my numbers. Like how am I doing versus the competition? Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? How am I, how am I doing? And so this report, um, so search queries, if you haven't heard that term before, it's essentially a search term. Someone typing in a search term, um, if the, hopefully a lot of the audience understands the difference between keywords and search terms, keywords, what we use in Amazon are like, you know, things that you can index for, but search terms are like how the actual shoppers are interacting with Amazon and the search pages. So what this report does is it breaks down um, how, you, again, you are performing. So it's located inside of your accounts. So you're only going to get access to your data and how you're performing on a whole bunch of different shopper searches, which has been really cool. When it first rolled out, it was only uh, at a brand level. So you could see how your brand was doing versus like on a specific search query. Now for a lot of people who, if you have larger accounts or us, if we're managing, like we have several clothing brands, how you're doing at a brand level was amazing and we were super grateful for it. It was also like, great. Okay. So then what do we do on a, when we're comes to making decisions on a product and how we're advertising it. Um, so then Amazon rolled out uh, the ability to look at a child ASIN level, how that individual child ASIN is doing on specific searches, which again has been really, really phenomenal to answer those questions of how are we doing versus the market? Yeah. Ritu, uh, do you want to add something to it? Um, yeah, no, I think uh, Elizabeth uh, really introduced that whole um, uh, tool really well. I think 
uh, search query performance, just the one thing to add is that it's now part of a larger uh, suite of tools uh, called Brand Analytics. And so search query performance is one part of it, uh, but they've also given us a few others like uh, search catalog performance and top search performance, which used to be called Brand Analytics in the past. They've kind of rebranded it and put it under that. So it looks like Amazon is giving us more and more data, and this seems to be just the beginning. Uh, I'm also excited about you know all the different possibilities of being able to download so much um, detail about not only our products, but also how our competition is doing, how the top performers are doing. Um, and it's a, a really useful tool. Um, the only thing I would add is that uh, at the moment, because it is still in the uh, initial early days of uh, rollout, uh, it's, it, it, it tends to be a little clunky uh, in the sense that it's not super easy for people to just look at it and say, good, like now I know what to do. <laughs> There's a yeah. bunch of extra, extra things you need to do in order to get this data out of the, of the system. And then, you know, kind of combine that with offline data, different types of data, and then arrive at some useful, um, uh, you know, insights that can be deployed. So yeah, I, I'm sure we'll be getting into some of those things. Uh, but yeah, I'm also very uh, excited about search query performance. Yeah, uh, I think that was a clear explanation. But I think Amazon have never been good at coining their KPIs, the term that they call. And I think it's been always confusing for the sellers to understand what that exactly mean. Like if we just look at the dashboard right now, I think they have their uh, queries, then uh, we have uh, impressions. And we basically have to use a tool to just short out all this data and then to get a clear idea about what this exactly tells us, like mm -hmm. uh, branded uh, conversion rate, non-branded conversion, all this. And I think this is a great tool that Amazon have added. Firstly, we can see the data directly from Amazon, which we were never been able to. So moving on to this, I think uh, when you talk about search query performance, so how can sellers identify the patterns or because it gives a lot of data starting from weekly, monthly, quarterly, and everything from catalog to ASI level to keywords that the ASI is getting searched for. So what kind of information do you think, or if you, uh, Ritu, if you can just go deep into this, like how we can identify trends or seasons out of it? Yeah, so uh, before we get into trends, I just want to say that in order to derive any kind of trends, uh, you cannot rely on snapshot data because snapshot is only going to give you data over a certain period of time. So like we were saying earlier that you can pick uh, the performance over a week, a month, a quarter, right? That's a snapshot. Now, when you start to stitch different snapshots together, that's when you start to see trends, right? The trend is has to have a timeline associated with it, which uh, by default, uh, this tool does not have a timeline uh, associated with it. So, uh, so I guess the first thing to do is to start downloading these reports and then stitching them together in um, a different uh, environment. Like it could be some sort of BI tool. You could use, either use um, Google Sheets to do that stitching or any other tool that you've created or someone else has. I know there's a few tools on, uh, you know, in, in the community that are available for free. I know Monsoor has one, which is uh, Supa, I think that's what it's called. Um, and then, you know, lots of people have built their own tools to, to do exactly that. So I would say the first thing to do would be to start downloading, right? Uh, and how you want to download uh, will depend on your goals. Like, what are you looking for? What answers are you seeking? and then go and start uh, looking for those time periods. Um, if you want to see recent data, obviously you'll do like a weekly and see how things have changed, maybe because of something you did, like let's say you ran a lightning deal, for example, uh, did that impact anything uh, on the search query side of things? Did it change uh, the order of things? Um, again, that will only be visible if you see deep data over time. So keep downloading snapshots. Um, and then uh, what can people, do with that. Um, there's a, a few different things that people can use those, um, uh, you know, th those trends for. Uh, one could be to see how you're doing um, vis-a-vis -vis how the market is doing, right? The, the market data is also kind of available as an aggregate. So you can compare yourself to the market and seeing if you're doing better or worse. That's one use case. Um, another one that I can think of is um, 
uh, you want to see how you're doing versus your ads, like on the organic side versus your ad, uh, because you can combine search query performance data with, uh, you know, search um, impression share uh, report. Mm -hmm. So that's another different that's coming from the ad side of things. And then you can look at those two together to see if you're making the right decisions on both sides. Are you making the right decisions on the organic side? And are you also learning from the organic side and making the right decisions on the on the advertising side? Um, and so that's how I would try to approach this. Now, there's also other uh, patterns that you can see, not necessarily trends because trends need, need uh, a timeline. But for patterns, you can also see how your funnel is performing because it is essentially a funnel, right? You get impressions, you get clicks, you get add to carts, and then you get um, your purchases and you want to see where you're dropping off. And that might give you some ideas on what to change and so on. So yeah, those are some of them. I don't want to take too much time, but uh, I'll hand it back to you or uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth, you have something to add. Yeah, no, definitely. That of uh, Rishi's point on the different time frames is like 100% spot on. Um, so basically, what you would do is you'd go in and you view a specific time range, which can be interesting if you are just trying to like glean what is my best search queries for my product right now. Like that might not be a bad idea to download um, one you know, one snapshot maybe. Again, it really depends on the analysis. But 100%, if you are trying to get trends over time. And honestly, if you were doing the analysis for your best keywords, it probably would be good to also have like kind of some sort of time range look back. The, of course, the one drawback to that is it's a whole lot of reports and it's a whole lot of combining of reports. Although shout out to Amazon, they did finally make us a download button, which we are all very grateful for. Uh, before there are certain other uh, data dashboards that Amazon puts out that we go in and we look at them and we're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm so excited. There's no download button. So this information has to live in this tool. So they did provide us the download button, um, which has been amazing. Um, certain points that uh, I might want to call out, seeing as I do agree with Ritu, like overlaying uh, search query data with impression share data and then looking because impression share um which is a search term impression share report you can download it gives you um like your top of search impression share for a keyword so you can say okay this is looking at search query report i'm performing better than my competition here how aggressive am i being with my ads on this one um search term which is great analysis i do want to point out that there are certain um data differences in the search term reports versus the search query reports. A lot of people have gone and done analysis and said like, hey, this is telling me that I only made X amount of orders within this time frame. But then if I go and look at like my business reports or my ad reports, like there's differences. When it comes to combining different data sets that are located in different places in Amazon, you have to understand what data is contained within this data set. So if you understand, and it's not that Amazon's like giving us incorrect data or like they're not telling us the whole picture. It's just how they've chosen to calculate the data set. So the data set in search query is, uh, will only um, basically calculate the sales, click-throughs, um, you know, like impressions for anything that's contained within a search grid meaning it doesn't include product pages. If there's any you know, widgets on the page, it won't include data for that. If you're running, say, a sponsored brand ad, that's a headline ad, it's not gonna include data for that. That's not to say that, again, I 100% agree in the, uh, the validity and like how much good actual information you get over like overlaying these reports. Just don't freak out if like the sales data doesn't line up. It's fine, look at, look at ratios of total, look at, um, you, again, like how much top of search impression share do I have here for this ad? Okay, this is an important keyword. Okay, it makes sense for me to increase this ad here. I would look at it in that way, not trying to like marry apples to apples. Yeah, I think that was spot on. So for those who are watching this and trying to figure out why we are talking about those boring reports, right? So search to impression share report, I think probably it would be most important report that Amazon have added because there you can check if you're running ad for a search term, then what is your impression rank? How much impression share you are taking? And what is the A cost, conversion rate? You can calculate all those and you can figure out whether a search term is good for you and not, you are not ranking well for that, but still you have a good CTR, good A cost, and you can take 
a higher market share, you can simply go when you're targeting and check in which campaign those keywords mm -hmm. are being used and simply increase or try to increase your impression to get more market share. I think that would be good. Also, I think uh, in terms of comparison, we also got another report in brand ads, basically, that is a category benchmark report where Amazon kind of distributes their uh, median tier competitors and top tier and then bot bottom tier competitors. Mm -hmm. And it shows where you are lying. So there also, I think we can compare what is our CTR percentage and what is the difference between the who are in the top, who are in the bottom, who are in the middle, right? And again, uh, I, I have a query in this, right? Uh, like in search query performance, is it just the organic traffic that we are seeing or it combines the ad side of thing as well? Anyone can take it. From my understanding, it's combined. Last time I read. Yeah, and they haven't been super clear about it. I've been trying to yeah. look for information about this. Uh, at one point, they said it was combined, um, but it's it's hard to get that information out of them. Um, yeah, at this point, it looks like it's the overall kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think because it is still in a beta program, right? And uh, uh, same as Amazon Marketing Cloud, I mean, their team is very small. What I can go through, so. And obviously their definition and the terms that they are using, that is also not so clear when they launched first. And now things are starting to get clear a little bit. So I will give an example with one of our client. We uh, saw that in the, in the uh, if you just go to search query performance, they will have two tabs. That is, cat cat I think, catalog performance. And uh, there is another search query performance dashboard. So in the search query, they have brands level and there is a sign level. We went to the a sign level and figured out there is one A sign which is performing in the last year, uh, sorry, which is performing really good in March and Feb. And then we didn't know for that client that this is their main peak season because they are in a craft niche. And in the US, Feb and March is a craft season. So we didn't know that and we only identify that trend just by looking at this dashboard. So I think this is also how a search query performance dashboard can be used. And Moving on to this, we have this data, we have this report. Now sellers want to know what are the key points we need to figure out to make any decision in terms of PPC. And if we are making a decision, what kind of decisions are we looking at? Reto, do you want to take it? Sure, uh, yeah. So um, we actually made a tool uh, to combine um, the search query performance data with uh, sponsored brand impression share report and sponsored product impression share report in one view. The reason why we did that was to figure out uh, ad coverage. Uh, are we covering all the keywords uh, or search terms in uh, both these ad types? That's one uh, simple kind of uh, compare. It's just a Google sheet with uh, formulas and stuff that just gives you coverage, right? So if, you, if it isn't coverage, then we basically say, go and create these uh, in new campaigns with the check uh, the check a check mark um, really cool tool uh, in Google Sheets that can just um, highlight stuff that you need and then you just filter that out and go create those uh, those keyword campaigns that's one um, use the other thing is um, we look at the, the the performance that's coming from the ad side of things for those keywords um, and then we look for uh, any patterns where our spend is much higher than our sales uh, ratio. So if the spend ratio is higher than the sales ratio and it's on the same line, sorry, it's a little difficult to explain this visually, but <laughs> let's say you take a, a search query, right? Uh, and this search query is um, according to Amazon, it is our number one or number two search query. Most likely that's gonna be a branded keyword because that's the one we generally will rank the, the highest on and probably going to be the best um, then we compare that with uh, how much percentage of our ad sales are going to that keyword and what's the percentage of um, ad sales that are coming from those keywords and those numbers uh, can be compared and if you see that you're overspending on those keywords and getting less results, um, then you know that this is a keyword that you probably don't want to go too aggressive on, even though Amazon says, you know, it's it's one of your top keywords. So I think looking at all three pieces of data together, uh, the um, ranking that comes from search query in terms of these are your best search terms versus how they are performing, uh, combining all those two on, uh, on a single line 
uh, can help in um, deciding whether you should push more aggressively with confidence or not so much because clearly it's not giving you the results that you want. Yeah, I think that was 100% right. Elizabeth, do you want to add something? Yeah, no, I would say that that is a great way to analyze, you know, kind of like across the count. How are we doing? How are we not doing? Mm -hmm. um, one other thing we've also used it for is to identify keywords that uh, we feel makes sense to push on from a ranking perspective, because one of the things that, you know, has a heavily influence in ranking is, you know, your conversion, right? Obviously order velocity, which you can influence through ads, which is, you know, why everyone runs ranking campaigns. But the question is, and, and a lot of sellers ask, okay, so if I'm more aggressive, and if I'm going to rank on this keyword, but then if I have to pull back on ads because maybe those ads aren't as profitable as I wanted, like, can I sustain ranking here? Um, and honestly, it's not such a cut and dry question. It's kind of a we have to test it and find out question, which isn't all that great, but you can kind of go uh, do some digging and get some level of at least more confidence if this is going to make a good ranking keyword for you um, in the conversion rate data. Um, so the part of this comparison, if you've never looked at search query before, uh, Ritu was referring to, they give you kind of, what is it, your rank, or I forget what word they use for it. Yeah, they, they do call it um, uh, rank, search query It is rank. rank. Yeah, That's right. Rank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the search query ranking, which Amazon is saying like, hey, these are your most important keywords according to us, which is how they view it. But they also give you um, like impression data. You can see clicks. So you can see the whole shopper funnel. It's like, this is how many people are searching this. Mm -hmm. This is how many people out of the total that have, you know, you've gotten impressions for versus your, you know, the rest of the brands in the space. This is how the clicks are happening versus everyone else in the space. Um, add to carts and then at the very end of it, conversion rates. So you can kind of take a look at the entire shopper funnel. And this is also a really great thing to look at um, as to like, well, I'm getting better conversion rates technically when somebody actually clicks on my products, but I'm not getting a whole lot of the impression share which makes sense if I'm already converting better, maybe I can push that particular product or that particular search through ads and then, you know, get more people into my funnel, which then I should get more clicks. Um, and then ideally my conversion rate holds. So I love, you know, like Ritu was saying, kind of like almost a broad approach, like where are we maximizing in our market? And then you can also kind of use it as somewhat of like a more sniper specific approach is that, okay, if I'm going to invest ad dollars specifically to influence rank, where where should I do that? Which what is most likely going to give me my best results? Yeah, I think that was a great explanation. Adding to it, I think uh, because it gives you the search terms as well and the conversion rate CTR for mm -hmm. that uh, search terms. Again, it might be for some sellers the search term may not be that much profitable. So I think it is mm -hmm. the best way, as you guys already shared, that to combine it with a search term impression share report to understand how much you are worth in the market or can you push it or mm -hmm. is it brands are dominating it and if you push it it will be just spending on cpc higher cpc and not getting that much conversion rate so i think combining it with uh, that report search term impression share report to analyze further and then making your any ppc decisions would be really great for this again it gives the ctr and cvr so you can analyze how much your ctr is versus your competitors in the market and you can make the changes in order to increase the ctr if your targeting is not proper or if your main image is not proper your title your reviews numbers your pricing or your delivery date so i think all this you can improve by looking at this data again moving on since we got what we have to implement now if we just go to a little bit some small questions about ads what would be your favorite uh, bidding type starting with Pritu? What would be your favorite bidding type? Uh, did, you mean, did you mean bidding strategy or did you mean ad type? Yeah. Bidding strategy? Yeah, bidding strategy. Okay, cool. So, okay, so just to explain bidding strategy, uh, there's three types of bidding strategies. One is down only, which seems to be the default for most uh, ad types except auto. Uh, then there is up and down, which is the um, uh, where Amazon can change your bid in real time to more than your base bid, right? Up or down uh, below that base bid. And then there's fixed uh, fixed bids, which basically means that whatever you bid is whatever you end up paying. 
Um, so the way I look at bidding strategies is that it is decided by who is um, likely to uh, convert, right? Amazon knows your shoppers uh, better than you know yourself, I guess, because they've got data points. Uh, so for example, if uh, let's say, Sammy, you're looking for uh, foundation on Amazon, and let's say you've never looked for foundation on Amazon, yeah. Amazon knows that this is not likely going to be a conversion. And so it's possible for them to lower uh, bids uh, in real time if that's the direction, the down only direction, so that you can be, um, you can only uh, you, you can be protected from an in, you know a conversion that might not happen and and you can kind of uh, take advantage of that algorithm whereas if let's say you've set your um, uh, bidding strategies to up and down uh, it could mean that uh, if you know if you are generally looking for certain types of products uh, even though the base bid is not enough to uh, to have your ad be seen by that person but because you've displayed a history of searching for those products and you happen to be searching for that product at that moment, um, Amazon will increase your bid just to show your ad to that person, to that shopper, and potentially get a conversion because they want to optimize for conversions, right, whichever way. So those are the two differences uh, with, with the down only and the up and down. Now, fixed bid is when you know, um, you're dictating uh, what you would like uh, Amazon to uh, have you enter the, the auction with, right? So regardless of what other people are bidding, uh, if you're going to be aggressive and say fixed bid $15, well, that's how much you're going to end up paying for those clicks. Why that might be useful is when you want to maybe uh, launch a new product when there's not much history, where Amazon might have a tendency to want to downbid you uh, so that you don't enter the auction as much. Uh, that's the time when you can use fixed bids. So I would just say that depending on um, what you want to achieve, like what your goals are, if you're launching, then fixed bids is a really good way of uh, kind of making sure that you do show up as much as you possibly can. Um, and on the down only versus up and down, um, I would say I make that decision based on performance. If I see that, uh, a campaign isn't performing that well uh, with very high ACoS, I'll obviously protect um, our clients by letting that be a down only um, uh, campaign. Whereas if it's a really good campaign with, uh, you know, maybe uh, an ACoS less than half of the target, uh, I'd say, okay, even if I double my bids, it would still be fine. Like I would still have enough room. Uh, so I, I'd rather take that chance and maximize impressions uh, if I can get them, if Amazon can get me in front of the shoppers that are likely to purchase. So I think those are the, the, the ways in which I would use those three. I don't necessarily have a favorite. It's just a different one for each situation. Yeah, I think it is a, it is a topic where the answers may vary. But talking to Elizabeth, what is your first choice when it comes to these three winning types? Yeah, so Richie did an excellent job of explaining uh, why and when all of those. And I would say I fall into a similar camp as in, um, you know, they all are good in specific scenarios. I suppose if I had to pick one, I may go for fixed bidding. Um, I would say probably for me, it, the differentiator between fixed bidding or dynamic down only, which are the two that we find that we personally use the most, um, would be how important is it for me to be able to show up for this keyword? So if it's a ranking keyword, if it's a keyword that I really, really want to test, then fixed bidding is what I would go with. If it's it's not as important, I'm running it more for profitability, I, I'd be fine if I give up some impressions to be a little bit more profitable. I would definitely go with dynamic down only. Um, I find that we use dynamic up and down rarely. And the reason why, uh, it was very good illustrated by Ritu kind of explaining it, um, is you, you need to yourself take into account what a you know what doubling your bid is going to look like because the thing that finally made me have the aha moment why dynamic up and down bidding tends to get higher a cost is um in their calculation they're only saying do we feel like you're going to convert on this they're not going to say do we feel like they're going to convert at an roi that they're targeting um so for that instance we we just find it's easier for us to control the bids if we use the other two 
Yeah, I think I would have a different answer in this because I tend to have a slight weakness towards up and down because it tends to give me more rest of the search conversions. Mm -hmm. So, so I think uh, that was a great uh, discussion today, and I think we are above thirty minutes. So before we end the podcast, so would you like to, Ritu? Would you like to share where can people find you? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm usually there, um, and I think Elizabeth is too. Elizabeth <laughs> posts a lot of good stuff. Uh, yeah, so my LinkedIn handle is just my full name: R I T U J A V A. So you can find me there. That's good. Elizabeth, where can people find you? Yeah, actually, same. Uh, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. There's a lot of really good active uh, Amazon advertisers on there. So if you're not checking out LinkedIn, definitely recommend. Uh, definitely recommend checking out Ritu's uh, content as well. So if you just want to see what I'm on about when it comes to Amazon advertising, I do try to put out some good actionable content there. Um, follow me there if you're interested in just like checking us out as an agency. Uh, definitely the website, which is Jungler, like the name however that is, <laughs> uh, jungler.com. Yeah, we'll add all the links in the description. Thank you guys for joining today. It was awesome discussion. Thank you. Bye, guys. Take care. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Bye.